Hello everyone. Now in this video we are studying one of the very interesting topic in operating system and this topic is also you know very last chapter of operating system. So till now in the operating system we have covered some of very tedious topics which are completely theoretical I mean which you cannot see by your own eyes. Uh, we have covered topics like uh, disk uh, I mean uh, process scheduling, we have covered topics like memory management, we have covered introduction, deadlocks and so many things that we have covered. Now in this video because this is again this is coming out to be the, in the very last of operating system, the last chapter of operating system. So I just wanted to give you some practical feeling about what we are going to study and what are the topics that we will be covering here. So this topic is actually about the secondary memory. So till now the topics that we have studied they are from the main memory or according to the software there is operating system. Now this is about the secondary memory. And as you can see I have already have a secondary memory here which is the hard disk drive. So this hard disk drive is I took it, took it out from a laptop but again some of your computer some of you are having a bigger drives as compared to this. This is a very small drive very compact drive as you can see this is a 750 GB drive. So it's a very very compact drive okay. So some of you might be having much bigger uh, drives as comparative to this. So uh, this is uh, I feel this is uh, you know there is some length is also written okay. So uh, in on your desktops generally we are having 3.5 inch drives which are basically bigger than this this big in size. So we are going to study how these drives are made up of. So what are the things what are the elements in this drive which makes us or which uh, stores data, how we are going to store the data, how we are going to retrieve the data from the hard disk and rather uh, in the hard disk what are the different forms and different structures of the hard disk. Okay. So this is a internal diagram. So let me first do one thing, let me show it to you uh, logically how these things are working and then again I am going to come back to this diagram. Okay. Now in this drive we have something called as a magnetic disk. disk. So I think you must have seen uh, 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 you know CD drives and DVD drives with you right. CD drives and DVD drives they are uh, actually you once you write data on the CD and DVD drive you cannot you know erase them right. But in case of hard disk you can erase them. It is it, it is because the hard disk is containing these kind of drives but these kind of drives are actually magnetic in, taste, in terms of hard disk. So we store data as a magnetic charge. So you can see these kind of drives are actually inside this hard disk. So because it is a very smaller hard disk so it will be having very small disks like this. But when you have bigger hard disks which are of 3.5 inches or something. Now on those uh, disks we have uh, these kind of magnetic drives and all these drives are actually stacked over each other. Stacked over each other means so there will be one drive like this then we will be having one more drive under this then we will be having one more drive under this and we will be having different you know uh, uh, platters on this. So platters I, I should say platters or you can say surfaces. So as you can see we are having an upper surface on this and we are having a lower surface on this. Again uh, a part of this we, we can have one more disk here. Again in that disk also we can have an upper surface and we can have a lower sur surface. So this disk it is actually inside a hard drive. As you can see there is a video that I have included here in this uh, in this video where I am showing a working mechanics of uh, the secondary memory that is a hard disk drive. Now in this disk we have something called as tracks. So what are tracks? These round circles these are actually tracks and these tracks are actually divided down something called as sectors. Okay. Now imagine it like this. This is your hard drive and this is one of your platter. Okay. So this way we are ha going to have more than one platter. Now on every platter there are two surfaces. There is an upper surface and there is a lower surface. Okay. So we have an upper surface and we have a lower surface. And to rotate these platters as you can see these platters are uh, standing something called as spindle. So what happens is this, this spindle rotates and because this spindle rotates therefore the disc also rotates like this. Okay. So spindle makes them rotate. Now there are different speeds of the spindles. For example you have 5400 RPM hard drives which is uh, that is 5400 rounds per minute that, that means in every minute they are going to take uh, 5400 rounds like this. We also have hard drives which are 7200 RPMs. We also have a hard, drive that, hard drives that are approximately uh, 9 to 10,000 uh, RPM and we also have some special drives these days which are also taking a speed of 15,000 to 20,000 uh, you know 20,000 rounds in a minute. Now if the speed of rotation is more 
obviously the rate at which you are going to read the data from the hard drive that is also going to increase. So generally it is better whenever you are going to purchase a hard drive or secondary memory then it's better to look at the speed or RPM of that particular drive. For example here the drive that I am having here so here somewhere here they must have written what is the rounds per minute or what is the RPM of this hard drive. So in this hard drive is actually uh, approximately so this is rotating at a speed of 5400 rpm so in most of the drives the speed is also written okay now coming back to this so these drives are also having tracks they are having uh, these rotations are tracks and in every track is divided into sectors so uh, there are many tracks as you can see there are many tracks in a drive in a in a platter and every track is divided into various sectors okay and the number of sectors in every track is going to be equal so how does it how, how do we do it so you can see the most inside track here uh, that is having more density so what happens is in the hard disk uh, when you come to the most inside one track i mean the inside track which is closest to the center that track is having highest density of uh, storage so it stores more information because the number of uh, sectors even in that inside uh, track that is going to be equal as compared to the number of sectors that is uh, on the outer side of uh, this drive. Now what happens is we have something called as read write head. Now as you must have seen the old gramophones or gram, uh, where we used to have something uh, this kind of structure that uh, we used to have a, a structure where we used to put some plates here and according to this on this there's some instrument that you write on this these plates used to rotate and accordingly we used to produce some kind of sounds okay so these are old graham bells i think they are they're called as graham bells so these uh, graham bells uh, produce music in the same way uh, in hard drive to read the data from the desk we used to put something called as a platter on this so there's a sorry something called as a read write head on this so there's a read write head but the re this read write head cannot touch the drive because when this read write head can will touch the drive so uh, because the drives rotate at so much fast pace it rotates at so high speed that if this is going to touch it so it is going to create scratches on the surfaces of this drive and if it is going to create the scratches on the surface of this drive so obviously your uh, drive will get corrupted so some, th sometimes that is the reason why you are going to get bad sectors on your drive okay why you are going to get bad sectors because these these uh, read write head if sometimes by mistake if they touch it it creates a problem so generally they do not touch so there is a gap between this drive and this uh, i mean this platter and this read write head and this gap is actually an air gap so because this drive is going to store information in terms of charge because it is a magnetic disk so it has to read that magnetic charge okay got it so this is how your drive is structured now our aim in this chapter is number one is we are going to study about the surface of this drive i mean if let us say this uh, in every sector if i'm going to say in every sector i'm going to st store this much bits or bytes of information and i'm going to tell how many tracks are there and i'm going to tell how many sectors in a particular track then can you find the capacity of this drive and secondly we are also going to discuss about that uh, if let us say uh, we want to read the data from the drive obviously to read the data but what you have to do is uh, to read the data you have to take this read write head on the particular sector for example you have to take this read write head on the on the particular track from where you have to read the data and then you have to come to the desired sector on that track so uh, when this read write head come to the desired track then you have to come to the desired sector on the track and there's some time that is utilized on the basis of that and accordingly you have to measure that if you want to read some specific bytes of data let us say you want to read some uh, 3 mbs of data or 4 mbs of data let us say you want to read some 1 gbs or tbs of data then how much time will it take for this uh, drive to transfer all the data from the disk okay so this is the main uh, things that we are going to study and a part of this there are something called as disk scheduling algorithm disk scheduling algorithm means if this is the track so if this is uh, the platter and this is your read write head then how you are going to create the movement of this uh, 
this uh, particular read write head so that you can minimize the number of movements so that you can read the you know data faster so uh, just like we have seen the process scheduling algorithm so according to different kinds of process scheduling algorithm we were getting different kind of features for example in shortage of first we were getting maximum throughput right in uh, you know longest job first and we have uh, the time quantum based algorithm even we have the first come first serve algorithm there were some kind of features some of those algorithms were having you know problem of starvation some of those algorithms were giving uh, maximum throughput some of those algorithms were giving minimum throughput there were some problems with that right so in the same way so when you are going to uh, you know schedule uh, this read write head over the disk i mean which sector it has to read or which track it has to read on uh, which sequence it has to uh, you know process the request of the user uh, the amount at which you are going to uh, or you can say the rate at which you are going to read the data from the disk is going to change so obviously for that we are going to study something called as disk scheduling algorithms so disk scheduling algorithm is also a part of this particular chapter so initially what we will do is we will start with the st secondary storage some basic problems according to the secondary storage, storage which is about uh, given a disk uh, this is the amount of data that you can store and according to the amount of data what is the capacity of disk so we are going to look at some very easy questions and then we'll look at some disk scheduling questions i hope uh, this was helpful for you so let me do one thing let me write out write, write down one or two questions and accordingly we'll start okay